Welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to fetch data in a server component using the app router in Next.js. I'm also going to show you how to fetch data in a client component using a proxy route to, to hide uh, and not expose the API key for the client. So that's pretty cool. And I'm excited to get started. So let's do that. This is a move application that I'm creating in a course that I've been doing for some years now. Uh, and the last version is using uh, Tailwind and Next.js, but it's using the page router. So I'm currently refactoring this to using the app router. So we're going to use this application um, for fetching data with the app router in Next.js. And we're going to do it on the server component on, and also in a client component with React Query, Tanstack Query. So this is the application. You can see here's an infinite scroll here. And... Here we're going to use client fetching for this page, but if we go inside of a movie here, for example, this one, this one is going to be fetched server side and we're not going to use React query for this one. So let's start off with this one. So go inside of the code. I provided you with some starter files and that's the whole product, except it's not working because I've removed the stuff that will get this application to work. So I'm just going to start this up. Uh, npm run dev. And also make sure that you have an .n.local with the, uh, an API key from the movie database API. You have to register there and get the key. So this one is on 3001 because the other one is on 3000. So you can see it's just saying home now. It's not working. But if we use this number up here, it's for the same movie, 447365. You can see that it says movie there. So no data, not anything there really that's useful for us. Inside of this project, we're using the app router in Next.js. And I created this dynamic route here where I fetch the ID from the route. And I have the page here. So I'm not going to go through everything with the app router. I'm just going to show you how to fetch data inside of the app router. And I'm going to start with this uh, server component. So you can see that I comment out this stuff here because this isn't working now because we don't have any data for this component. So the great thing with the app router is that we don't need to do any get server side props or get static props or anything like that. We can just fetch our data inside of the server component. So you can also see here what I'm doing here from the params. I'm just structuring out the ID here. And that's exactly what I named this folder, uh, folder to inside of the square brackets. So that's how I get the ID for the movie from the dynamic route. I'm going to just structure out the movie, the directors, and also the cast. I await. You can see that this is an async function. You can do that with server components in Next.js. You mark them with async, and then you can await stuff and fetch stuff. We're going to create a function that's called get movie data, and we're going to give it from the params, we give it the ID. Params with an S. And of course, we haven't created this function yet, so we're going to do that up here outside of the component. Const get movie data async. We have the ID as a string, like that. And inside of here, we can just do our fetch. But for this case, I'm actually going to fetch from two endpoints because I want the credits and I also want the movie data itself. And the credits is on one endpoint and the movie data is in another endpoint. And I can also briefly show you here, I have this folder called API and fetch function. So this is just a really basic fetch function that I'm using uh, on several places in this application. So that's why I've created this one here, so I don't have to retype this every time I fetch something. So it takes an endpoint, fetch it. If it's not okay, it throws an error. Otherwise, I convert the data uh, to JSON and I return it. So that's what this function do. And you can see that I also import it up here in the page that we're working on now. So that's the one that we're going to use for fetching the data. So first, we're going to fetch the movie data, movie endpoint. Well, we can say that it's going to be a string to be extra explicit here. You can see that I'm importing something here that's called movie URL and credits URL from a config file. I have the config file here for the application. So these are just functions for kind of creating this little URL for us. So I don't have to type them in like this. I think 
it's cleaner to have them here separated. So that's why I do like that. But you could, of course, just take this one and paste it in inside of the function itself that we are creating now. But I'm importing these ones and I'm creating and I'm creating these URLs. There are different URLs, different resources fetching this data. So the movie URL have one URL that is like this, and the credits URL as this one here where we add credits to it. So that is how the URLs look, and these are and this is the base URL for the API. But read all about it at the movie database API if you want to learn more on that. So I'm going to use the movie URL function that I import and I'm going to give it the ID. And then we have the credits endpoint. It's also going to be a string. Credits URL and we give it the ID. And then we have our URLs for fetching data. So we start by fetching the movie data, const movie. We await it. We use the basic fetch function that I showed you. It can also be explicit here because this is a generic. I typed it as a generic here. So you can see that I can specify the return type of this one. If I give it the return type here, this one is going to know that this is of the type movie. And we give it the movie endpoint. Copy this one, paste it in. This one is going to be the credits, basic fetch, and it's going to be credits and we have the credits endpoint like so all right so hopefully we have the data there but i want to fetch the directors only for this one and the directors i'm going to filter those out get the directors only like that const directors equal from the credits we're going to have a property that's called crew and you can see the auto completion here shows me this because i typed it uh, with the credits up here so it knows that this property exists i'm going to filter them and i'm going to have a member and if the member dot job equals director with a capital d then i'm going to return it so then i get the, all the directors here and then we just have to return something return we return an object, we have the movie, we have the directors, and we have the cast. And the cast is going to be from the credits.cast. And that's everything there is to this one to fetch the data. As you can see, it's pretty simple now where we don't have to type the get server side props or get static props or anything like that. Uh, we just create our fetch function. You could have created it right here if you wanted that, but I created it outside of this component and I used it here. So we just grab the data. So I can remove this one here now and just comment out this one like this. Comment it back or comment out, I don't know. I remove the comment. So we have the JSX here, save it, go inside the browser. And you can see now that we have the data here. So it's fetching it and it's awesome. It's server side fetched and everything. So it's gonna cache it also. Next.js is good at that, so it cached the data. So if you return to it now, it will have it cached, so it won't fetch it again. All right, so that's how you do it in a server component. But how do we do it in a client component? Because this one, if we look at the other application here that, that is working, we go to the home page, we have this infinity scroll here. So this is all fetched on the client, meaning that we also have to expose the API key to the client if we don't do some trick here. So I'm going to show you now how you can create a proxy route with Next.js so we don't need to expose the API key to the client. So go to the home page here in the app that we're currently working on. And in the app folder, we go to the page. You can see there are coming out a lot of stuff here also. And if we look inside of the API folder, you can see that I have a file called fetch hooks. And this fetch hook contains a hook that's called use fetch movies. And inside here, I have the use infinity query from, from uh, React Query. So I'm fetching the data here with React Query from an endpoint that's actually local. You can see forward slash movies, and we don't have this endpoint right now. So we have to create that. But how do we create an endpoint in the app folder with Next.js? So that's what I'm going to show you now. So inside the app folder, 
create a new folder that's called movies. And inside the movies, we create a file that's called route.ts. And we start by importing some stuff. Import next response from next forward slash server. Then I'm going to need some API URLs from my config file. Import search base URL and the popular base URL because we go back to the application. This one will have different endpoints depending on what you're showing. We're not in the search now, so we're going to show the most popular movies. But if we type something in here, Indiana Jones, for example, you can see that I have 52 results and all the indie movies here. So this one is going to have a different endpoint than if we delete this one, because now we're showing the popular one. Otherwise, we're showing the movies from the search. All right, so go back to the code. And then we have our basic fetch function. Import basic fetch from the API folder and fetch functions. Then we export an async function that's called get. We have the request and it's going to be of the type request like that. And then we can create our code for fetching the data here. But first we need to get the search param, but we're on the server now. So how do we get the search params on the server? Well, we have a const, I just structure out search params. We create a new URL and we give it from the request, we have the URL. So this will give us our search params and we have one that's called page search params dot get page. And we have another one that's going to be the search. So we want to know which page we're on and we also want to know what the user search for. So search params dot get search. You can see in the fetch hooks here that we provide the search and we provide the page param here. So these are the ones that we want to catch here in our route. So this is a get endpoint that we're creating here locally. All right. We need to decide which endpoint to use, depending if we're in a search or not. Const endpoint equal. If we have a search, I'm going to have an endpoint. And I'm actually going to use backticks for this one, dollar sign. We have the search base URL. Then we have the search. Then we have an ampersand. And we have our page equal. And we give it the page. All right. Otherwise, New backticks, dollar sign curly brackets. We have the popular base URL, ampersand. We have the page equal dollar sign curly brackets and the page. So here we decide which URL to use. Then we can grab our data. Data, we await, we use the basic fetch, and we give it the endpoint. And then we just have to return. From the next response, dot JSON data, like that. So we're creating this proxy route locally to get the data. And that this means that we don't need to expose the API key to the client because it's all used on the server in, in this one. And we call this one here. You can see that we don't provide the API key anywhere because this is on the client. So this is how we hide the, the API key for the client by creating this proxy route. All right. So let's go back to the page and let's see if this works. I'm just going to uncomment this one here. You can see that I have my hook here, use fetch movies, and the query is going to be what the user types in for searching. So that's the one that we provide there. And then I'm just going to uncomment some stuff here, uh, like this. And we can remove this one. So this should actually be it. We are fetching data on the client with React query. And we are using a proxy route for this one so we don't expose the API key. Save it and let's go back to our application. Let's see if it works. And it seems to be working. So that's great, it's working. So that's how you fetch it on the client and on the server with Next.js and the app router. If you fetch data, 
on the client like this one. It's great to use React Query for that one. You save a lot of work by using React Query and it will cache the data and everything for you. But if you're fetching it on the server, you can do it directly here now inside of your component, your server component in Next.js. So that's it for this one. Hope seeing you in another one.